Our Father and our God, we pause to say thank you. Thank you for bringing us through the various storms in our lives. We thank you for uh, this broadcast. We thank you for this founder and all of the founders who have laid the foundation upon which we stand. And so, God, now we ask that you would bless those who are here and those who are viewing and listening to us with hope and resilience in the midst of the storms that keep on raging. We ask these things in your precious son Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. amen. Uh, there are a number of things that we want to uh, celebrate. Uh, one of our young people, Rebecca Reed, is now a, a freshman at Yale University. She made the, the debate team. She participated in a mock trial as a freshman because she was in our oratorical contest. And so we salute Rebecca Reed at Yale, standing strong. We want to thank all of the sponsors of our back to school uh, uh, backpack, book bag uh, rally that we held at Fellowship. Uh, yesterday, we thank Pastor Jenkins for hosting us. We thank Walgreens and CVS for providing supplies and Walgreens for providing the book bags and the uh, many, many, many volunteers whose names we cannot call, who packed, who purchased supplies and who brought them here that our children might be ready to start uh, school, the first week of school. We also thank uh, uh, Janice Mathis, one of our former staff members, who's hosting a uh, HBCU uh, college engagement uh, with, as a part of the National Council of Negro Women uh, uh, program. We have Kalana Kale uh, with them today. They're at uh, Florida A&M University, making sure that our students are civically engaged, registering to vote, and our census registrants for 2020. We want our students to vote on the campuses where they attend school. So we expect Cameron to register and vote in Ohio. We expect students to register and vote in the states where, and the cities where their campuses are located. And so Kalana will be giving us tweets and reports from Florida A&M. And finally, uh, Reverend Jimmy Daniels is here today. He's one of our thousand church connected uh, pastors, Shiloh uh, Church in Summit, Illinois. But he's a businessman, he's more like Paul, and so he has a job fair at PUSH this Tuesday night at 6 p.m. in Chicago. Anyone that's interested in uh, learning and working in uh, the cleaning business, you need to meet us here at PUSH at 6 p.m. They are going to hire people. They will train you to clean properly, and so we want you to join us here. Now, there is, uh, I want to thank Reverend Jackson, uh, for continually uh, fighting and being on the cutting edge of change. As you may or may not know, he is in Washington today uh, as a part of the Congressional Black Caucus. Jonathan Luther Jackson, who was supposed to be here, he's there. Uh, Reverend Dr. Todd Yeary is there. But Santita and I are here. <laughs> so, thanks be unto God. Everybody else is there. Um, the storms in life keep raging. And oftentimes uh, we focus on the, the physical storms. You know, global warming, as you know, has caused uh, atmospheric changes. Winter seems like summer in Chicago. Summer seems like winter. We, we can't tell what to wear because the ice caps are melting and the storms are increasing, the polar ice caps up on the top of the earth. And there are major shifts in the climate because the ozone layer, the, the layer that surrounds the earth has openings in it, mainly because of the planes emitting hydrocarbons into the atmosphere. It used to be because of the hairspray. It's also because of the automobiles. So many automobiles on expressways all over the country emitting these uh, toxic things into the atmosphere. It causes these storms. And so today, when we opened the broadcast, we focused on Hurricane uh, Dorian and how it has devastated uh, a part of the Bahamas. And we can see the physical storms. We, we, we understand what happens when there's a snowstorm or a hurricane or a tornado, and, and we rush immediately. We gather supplies. We, we say we got, to, we got to help the people, and we do. And so that's why PUSH is going to be a relief 
Center site. We're hosting things. Don't bring your, your winter clothes. It's not winter in the Bahamas. Don't bring things that people don't need. Don't bring used things because when you've lost everything, you don't need somebody else's extra. We need some things that people can use. They need sanitary items. They need new underwear. They have nothing but hope. Hope that somebody will see them. Hope that somebody will recognize the need and respond. So you can bring things right now as I'm talking. Pack up, go to the, uh, the drugstore and purchase some sanitary uh, items. They need lotion, they need cleaning items. They do not need your used things. Now, we, it's hard for us to imagine the Bahamas that we once went to for relaxation, for fun, now in such a, a devastating state. But as we respond to that, there are some other storms that uh, continue to rage in our lives. They are varied and they are very different. There are sometimes we don't think about these other storms and so we ignore the signs. We, we fail to respond with any kind of humanitarian response. There's no effort when we see, uh, I know you're saying, what are you talking about? What storms? Well, there's some political storms that are going on in this country even as we speak. The people from the Bahamas, they are trying to evacuate them from a toxic island to Florida. At least 100 initially were turned away from entry by our country. These are our people stopped at the border. So when you think about the border, it's not just El Paso. They stopped them from entering Florida. Talking about uh, the words from the White House, these are uh, dangerous people. That's a storm. You've already had a physical storm. You're trying to get to safety, trying to go to a place of assistance. You're trying to get help and somebody says you can't come here. There are some uh, other political storms. The uh, Republican Party is gerrymandering, redrawing lines across the South so that we will no longer be able to elect our people that look like us, that, that are black and brown and, and Asian to these legislative seats. They are redrawing lines in a crooked way so that we can't possibly elect anybody. Well, we're not going to let that happen. Those are storms. It's not uh, the other storms. Public schools are closing in inner city communities, New Jersey, Chicago, Philadelphia. They shut buildings down and, and they change the complexion of a neighborhood. Where will your child go when the school is closed? Forcing people to move to other locations. You have parents rolling the dice to see what school their child can attend so that they can get a high quality public education. But we're not responding to those kind of storms. Well, we have urban cities where teachers are striking because they, they don't have the classroom size. They're not getting paid the, the wages that they should. How can you pay somebody that produces a lawyer, produces a doctor, produces an engineer less than the engineers make? Teachers should make more than anybody because they produce what we need. You see the a storm of extreme funding cuts. People don't have access to health care. Nurses can't provide the kind of support that we need. When you put somebody in the hospital, you are praying that the nurse will come and make sure that your loved one is taken care of. Well, how can they come when they're underpaid? How can they come when they're under-resourced and understaffed? And so when you look at the, that's another storm. Other storms, for example, these HBCUs that we celebrate that produce the most black professionals in any category, well, they're under attack. They are losing funding. Most of the children that go there need financial aid. Well, if I don't have the aid to give you and I need aid, how can I help you? That's a storm that we have to respond to. Well, a bigger storm. The violence that besets all of our communities. You see the, the children being shot when uh, we opened up this morning, a family met us here. One of our former staff members was impacted. Her family was impacted. A football player, a quarterback at Hyde Park High School is now in, Hyde, in uh, University of Chicago Hospital, struggling every hour 
for life. Shot multiple times, not because he's a gang member, not because he's done anything wrong. He's a quarterback at Hyde Park. He was on his way to school, wasn't hanging out, wasn't going to a party, wasn't kicking it, just trying to walk. And then somebody said, well, he didn't go in a safe zone. How is it you define where I can walk to go to school? So when these storms that are raging in our lives come, we have to respond. I, I'm, I'm reminded of Isaiah, the prophet who said in, in uh, 41, he was trying to preach to a people that were devastated by several things. And he was wondering, what should I tell the people? How do I give you hope when you see so many storms and the storms keep on coming? Well, you have to respond with a sense of urgency. When you feel the storm is coming, you, you start to prepare so that you can survive the storm. We cannot allow children to wonder how they're going to eat. 16,000 homeless children in the city of Chicago that we know of, those who said I'm homeless, there are another several thousand who don't know they're homeless because they sleep somewhere different every night. That's a storm. We can't allow that to happen. We must respond with our voices. We must respond urgently. And Isaiah says, when you look at all of these storms in these turbulent times, oh, I know you, you say, I, I just don't know what I should do. Well, I don't know all of the answers, but I know who holds the answers. I know that you need an anchor in the midst of a storm. You need something to hold you in place. You need a, a lighthouse to focus in the midst of the storm. Every time the, the disciples were out to sea, they could look and find the lighthouse because when the winds are blowing, when the waves are tossing, you can't get your orientation right. But I know if you get a shelter in the midst of the storm, when you know you have an anchor, you can focus. You'll say, I need to loosen some things. I got to change the way I... Our schools are defined. I have to change the way the funding is. I'm going to have to register and vote because I got to get people that are in the state and the county and the city and the federal government that move on my interests. I got to have a government that doesn't have to waste time talking about meaningless things. They are voting to make sure that I am protected, that funding goes to the HBCUs. Oh, I'm going to register because my anchor is holding me in place. I know my ship is tossing. The waves are moving. The, the sea is rolling, but I know that I have an anchor, and I'm anchored like Isaiah was. I'm holding on to the anchor. I know that there is a God. I know that God is with me in the midst of the storm. I know that God is holding me in the midst of the storm, but I also know that God is in control of the storm. All the storm raging to get my attention. The storms are raging so that I will be motivated and not sit by in the south. We can change the conditions. The storms will keep coming. But when your soul is anchored and when your mind is focused, you won't sit by and let another election go by and you don't go out and vote. We don't need to look at just one office. We have to look at the United States Senate so we can make sure that we are in control of our destiny. We have to make sure that our children are protected. Parents, wherever you live, that community must be safe. It's not based on your poverty. It's based on your commitment. You may not have a job, but your job is to make sure that your child can go to and from school without fear of being gunned down by some erroneous person who can't shoot. It's not okay. Fathers, you may not live there, but you need to protect your child. You need to walk your child to school. That's why Reverend said, take your child to school. Meet your child's teacher. We must make sure that we are engaged in every aspect of the community that we live in. It's not enough to leave it to anybody else. When you're in a storm, everybody comes together across lines of race and gender, across lines of class. It's not by how high you are. When the storm hits, 
The storm doesn't know your degree. The storm doesn't know your income level. What the storm knows is I'm going to take you out unless you all stand together. And so I'm asking you, as they sing, my soul is anchored. Even though the storms keep on raging in my life and in your life, you just got to know that, the, that, that your soul must be anchored. You can go through these moments of grief and loss when you have God and you know that God is with you. It won't change immediately, but it will let you know that you can make it when you're sick because God is a healer that has never lost a patient. Oh, you can make it when you're struggling because God is a provider. He's all powerful and I know it. I just want you to know, make sure your soul is anchored in the Lord and God will provide. God will protect you.